Alright, so we are almost done with our paths for our top networks. So what we want to do next is clear out the foliage so we don't obviously have any rocks or trees or bushes or anything like that intersecting our paths. And then in the last lecture what we're going to do is go over how to add another texture layer to our terrain using that path. So obviously we want to lay down some sort of texture. Okay, so let's jump back into Houdini and clear out the foliage. Okay, so here we have our tile, terrain tile, our current one that we're working on, and all the paths and the areas being fed into this partition by index. Now, I want to take a moment here and talk about a couple of performance optimizations that I made. All right, so up here, you'll notice that um, after our partition by bounds this is where we're partitioning up the roads and tiles based off of uh, who's intersecting what, uh, we're feeding it into this split node. And what I'm saying here is if the partition size that's coming in is greater than one, that means we have at least one path and one tile. All right, some of these, you know, just have a single tile. All right, so that would be equal to one, which means then I'm going to pass that work item down into this merge node without having to pass it through this HDA processor, which ultimately saves time, right? Because beforehand, what we were doing is we were passing every work item into this HDA processor and it was trying to run on that work item, which, you know, was taking a few seconds per tile, even if it didn't have a path, it didn't have anything to do. So using this split node allows us to write this tiny expression right here to say, well, if I have more than, you know, a couple of items in my work item here, then we should probably pass it through this deformed pass uh, HDA right here, because we, we most likely know that we have a path and a tile. And so after that, I basically just merge all the work items back together. All right. And then I pass it into this partition by index where we're pulling in the areas and all the foliage paths. Okay. And the other thing that I did is I went into the dirtying mode and I set it to mapping standard. All right. So this is in the advanced tab in the partition by index node. We want that to be this mapping standard. And I brought up the help for it just so we could take a look at it. So we're going to say that a given partition will only be dirtied if an item in the partition is dirtied. Okay. And that means that if one of these roads actually changed, that means we need to recalculate the foliage over here. But if nothing changed in each of these partitions, then I'm not going to recalculate the foliage for that particular tile. All right. And again, that just speeds things up because now we're not having to rescatter the whole entire terrain. We're only scattering the stuff that, that has changed. Okay. So, um, I actually have it over here inside of Unity, so we can take a look. So if I were to actually select my path here and go to Edit, and we change this guy, like so, you can see that only the tiles and the foliage that are part of this whole path, all right, inside of that, those bounds, only those tiles and only that foliage is going to get recreated. So it speeds it up quite nicely, I should say, actually. Um, and again, it comes down to how you begin to design your top networks, all right? There's so much flexibility in this that you actually have power over optimizing it. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure I covered those um, so that way you guys can see how to start to optimize at least uh, your top networks. Okay, so let's turn our attention to uh, this terrain scattering HDA. So if we take a look here, uh, we have a work item here that has a bunch of data in it now. So we have a terrain tile, we have all the paths that are part of this terrain tile, and we have the area geometry. We're using the area geometry to define where we put our grasses. All right, but now what I want to do is I want to take in this, this mask that's being generated by the uh, deform roads HDA. All right, I want to take that mask and I want to subtract out the foliage points. All right, so to do that, what we want to do is we want to go up to our SOP HDA geometry node here, where we have all of our SOP level HDAs. And uh, what I want to do is I want to um, pass in the terrain here. So we have the terrain coming in like so. All right. So let's actually turn this to hide all other objects so we can see just the data that we have. So we're getting this height field from file and that's just kind of initializing the mask, but it is actually coming in with the mask already. So if I were to drop down a null node here uh, before that height field file node and I were to click on the info, you can see that we actually have a mask and that's that road mask. 
which is awesome because now what we can do is we can use that. So I'm going to go all the way down here, down to this mask noise. This is where we're deciding where foliage goes. And I'm going to subtract out the roads and the paths. So I'm just going to drop down a layer node, a height field layer node. So let's do this. We'll do height field. There we go. So height field layer, like so. And for the first input, I'm going to put in the base terrain. And for the second input, I'm going to put in the data that we want to blend with this All right, base terrain. So let's uh, make that visible. And what we want to do is we want to just affect the mask. So for the layers, I'm just going to put in mask, like so. And what I want to do is I want to subtract this from the current mask. So we'll just get this, and set that to subtract, and voila, there we go. So now we're removing any areas there uh, where a point could be scattered. Awesome. So we just need to rewire this up over here, like so, like that, and then like that. And there we go. So now if we were to come down here and let all those points calculate, we don't get any more foliage points where the road goes, or where the path goes. And that, my friends, is exactly what we are looking for. So let's save that change. And let's jump up and out, and let's do another cook inside of Houdini here, just to verify that everything is in fact working for all of our different tiles. And there we go. So now we have our scatter points for every tile, and when they intersect a particular path, it removes the points. So now we're not going to get any trees or rocks or anything uh, where the paths are. So that's exactly what we wanted. Very cool. So let's actually go and test this out inside of Unity over here. Cool, so let's jump up and out and let's save our top network like so. Very cool. And let's copy it over into our Unity project here. And let's we'll go back in Unity and we do need to go and rebuild this. And I will go and actually add these guys back in. So they have actually fixed this bug. I'm just waiting for the the build to come out. There we go. So I'm going to add my area generator and my basic path. Cool. So now if we go to the PDG asset link, you can see it's already cooking because things have changed. But we do actually, we should actually cancel this and refresh it just because we did make an HDA change. So I'm going to reset it, refresh it. There we go. And then let's just do a cook output. All right, and that will get things going and should clear out the foliage uh, where our path is. Cool. All right, so now our path is clearing out the foliage. All right, and we can go and we can uh, change all this stuff now. So I can just go and grab these guys and maybe we push it over there a little bit. There we go. So now we're just updating the tile where this path intersects with the train. Pretty cool. All right, so you notice that uh, wherever the path is, we get just this kind of gray texture. And that's really just because it's the train saying there is no texture there. So as a final step uh, in this lecture, let's go and just assign a, a new texture for that. So we can just uh, leverage some of the nodes that we've already created in the texture terrain uh, HDA. Okay, so I'm going to leave you guys there. Thanks so much.